have you ever wanted or needed to use React components, but you don't have a server to actually run it on it, you just wanted to run it like bare HTML? Well, I'm gonna show you how to use that using Browserify, and of course the front end framework we're gonna use is React. So let's get started. So first things first, you're gonna go somewhere and just create a directory. I've created one in my desktop called React Anywhere. Um, it's right here, so I just made this folder called React Anywhere. And then what we're going to do is now we're kind of blank in here. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever editor you want, but you'll need some sort of terminal or console window. So I'm going to create a new terminal inside of um, inside of Visual Studio Code here. All right, and then we're going to get started. So first thing we need to do is we're going to use npm to and to create a project. So we're just going to use npm init. And we're just going to go through with all the default actions. It really doesn't matter. We're going to change all this later. And so now we should have a package.json. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come into this package.json and we're just going to delete it. I have a package.json that I'm going to use and it's going to have all the modules that we need and everything ready to go in this in the configuration that I think is best for our project. So I'm just going to copy that over here. And don't worry, a link to this will be in the description and all the code for this project will also be in the description so you'll be able to view it. Um, but here we go. So we have this React Anywhere tutorial and um, we got a build script. This will come in handy a little bit later. And then we have all of our dependencies and our dev dependencies. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run npm install. And this is just gonna, of course, install all those dependencies um, that we have in this file into our node modules folder. So after this occurs, shouldn't take too long, uh, depending on the internet connection, but here we are. Now we'll need Browserify, and we're gonna install Browserify as a, as a global module. You don't have to by any means, but I'm going to. So do npm install minus g, this is gonna make it global, and we're gonna type browser, browserify. And it's gonna take a few seconds, but it's gonna go ahead and install it globally. For me, I already have it installed, um, so it's gonna show, so it probably updated, so it just updated mine. Uh, but for you, it should say that um, it installed the package successfully. Um, now, hopefully that's in our path and we can use it. And this will come into play a little bit later. So now let's come over here and let's set up our directory structure a little bit more. So the only thing we have is a node modules folder, our package lock.json and our package.json. So I'm gonna create a new folder here and I'm gonna call it build. We're not gonna put anything in it right now. I'm also gonna create another folder and I'm gonna call it source. So I've made the source directory under here now. So we have a source directory and a build directory. Uh, and I'm just gonna create a new file under the root directory. We're gonna create a new file and we'll call this index.html. So now in our index.html, we're, I mean, it is just gonna be a basic um, HTML document. So, but this is what it's going to contain the JS file that Browserify is gonna build for us a little bit later. So let's just start by just doing the standard, um, by doing the standard HTML things like doc type HTML, and we'll use our HTML tag. Again, I'm using Visual Studio Code, so it will auto complete a lot of this for me. Um, so I don't have to worry about a lot of this. So like, um, but, but use whatever tool you, you would like to use um, by all means. We're gonna use our body tag. And inside of our body tag, we're gonna do two things. So because we're using React, I'm just gonna create a div that, Re that the React DOM is gonna be able to use. So we'll just make a div and I'll give it the ID of app. And that's it, that's all we're gonna put inside of that. And now we're gonna include our script. So again, like I said, our script is gonna be created by uh, Browserify for us. So we're gonna say that source is equal to build uh, forward slash, and we're gonna call our file app.js. That's why we created this build directory. It's gonna contain this file that is built by Browserify for us a little bit later. And for now, this is all we have to do in this index.html. So now we can move on from index.html to create the next file, which is gonna be our index.js. So we're just gonna go under our source folder and we're gonna create a new file we'll call it index.js. So our index.js is pretty minimal. It's just gonna do a few things, like it's going to use the React DOM to render our um, React component that we'll create a little bit later. Um, so for now, index.js is going to be the file in which we require the React module that we are going to create 
and we are going to use the React DOM to render it from this file. Um, so we're going to start how we start every React index file. So we're just going to require the React DOM. And we're going to require React. And we're going to go ahead and bring in the component that we're going to create. And we're going to create a component called um, landing. So let's do that. Const landing equals require dot four slash landing. Because it's going to be in the same file um, that we are creating right here. And we'll be able to include that. And we're going to use the React. We're going to use React DOM. And we're going to use the render function. Uh, and we're going to render that landing component. How we generally render a component. And then document dot get element by ID. And this is how we're going to get the element we created earlier. And we gave it an ID of app. Um, so our landing component is going to be rendered in our app um, div that we created earlier. So now let's create this next file that we'll need. So we need landing.js. All right, so now this is where things get a little bit different than the general React component you may be accustomed to because we had to do a few things differently. Um, because we're using Browserify and, and Babelify, we can't just export um, our React components how we're used to. Like you probably build the whole component and then export the object. We can't do that here. So we're going to have to use the create react class uh, function that's available from react and we can look at the react docs and um, if, if you want to look at the react docs you can and you can see this create react class uh, we installed in our npm package so we're just going to go ahead and use it so yeah so we're just going to copy over our react and we're just going to use our create react class as well and we're going to change these to const all right cool so now we can go ahead and actually build our component. So we'll start out how we very similarly always do. So you'll do a module.exports because again, we need to expose this so it can be used by other classes. Create class. And then we're going to use the create react class method. And inside this method is where we're going to export all of our functions, right? Um, so we can create our functions up here, but we're just going to export them in this syntax. Because uh, that's how, unfortunately, that's how we have to do it. So we're only going to create one function because this is just a simple tutorial after all. So we're going to create one function. It's going to be called update JSON. And the reason why we're going to create, and we'll say it takes data. It takes a parameter called data. Uh, so now what this is going to do is we're going to use a component. We're going to use a component called um, the React JSON view. And all this component allows us to do is specify a JSON object, and it will be represented in in a React component. So I'm just using this because it's an easy to use, because um, it's just an easy to use React component and it displays everything we want to get across here, which is that you can use React components uh, without having to run a React server using Browserify. So let's get back into it. Let's minimize this. All right, so we're just going to say this.state and we're going to set the state equal to a new object. So this update JSON function will be what is called um, by the create is what's well, going to be called by that react JSON view component um, when we change a value. So it'll update. Uh, that's pretty much, I mean, that's really all it does. So source, and we'll just say the source is going to be equal to data dot updated underscore source. Um, because this data object is what's passed and the field we want is the updated source. And we're just going to do a simple um, console.log. We're just going to do a simple callback, which has the console, which is console.log. And we'll just log the state that is now available after this is done. All right, cool. So now that we have that, let's create the last thing we'll actually need for this component, which is, and which every React component needs, our render function. So um, I'm not going to explain the render function. You all are well aware of that. But we're just going to make a return. And we're just going to have it return. The following, it's going to return a div 
it's gonna return a div. Auto completion is not always the best, right? Uh, so it's gonna return a div, and it's gonna use our React JSON component. So, oh, I haven't brought in my React JSON component. So let's bring that in. So let's do const. Uh, so let's do const, and we'll call it React JSON equals require React dash JSON dash view. So React JSON dot view dot default. Um, this default is actually important because of the way this module was created. I'm not going to go into the explanation and the difference into how common JS modules are created and how ES6 modules are created. Um, but if you want, I actually found a really good question for Stack Overflow where somebody answers the question pretty well. So I'm going to provide that explanation in the description down below. All right, so now that we have this React JSON component, let's actually use it. So our React JSON component. So let's use our React JSON component. And when we create this React JSON component, we're going to pass it some, some props. So the first prop we're going to pass it is the source. Uh, so the source is going to be equal to a data object that we're going to specify. And we're just going to specify this and call it um, our, our J. We're going to call it our JSON file. So we're going to pass it this object, and it's going to be our JSON file. We're going to include a JSON file. Um, J we're going to we we'll call it JSON.data, and we're going to include a JSON file here in just a second. Um, it's just going to have some mock data in it. It's not going to be anything special. Um, so now we're going to say the next part we're going to pass is on edit. Um, if you read the docs, you can really understand what all this does. But basically, on edit, you want to pass a method to it, and this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to be triggered whenever data. Um, changes so we're gonna call this dot update JSON um, and we're gonna pass it that data that will be updated and then for the third and final prompt we're gonna change the theme I'm gonna make the theme the harmonic theme um, just because it it will be a little bit easier to see hopefully on the screen so we'll just save all that and so now we have that let's let's do the final step which is including our JSON data so const JSON data equals require and we're going to pass it that json that data file we'll call it data um, and we'll put it in this directory so this data file like i said i will make this available to you all it's just going to be a simple file i'm going to show you i'm just going to copy and paste it and i'm going to add it over here and call it data.js and it's just going to have some mock data in it. I got this data from Makaroo, uh, the, the website Makaroo. It just allows you to create some dummy data. And so this is it. It's just a ob it's just a um, array of objects that just contains some random data about um, about some random people and their IP addresses. None of this stuff is real um, data. It's all randomly generated. So now we have our React component like created, but we need to export these actual functions. So let's export them. So we want to export update JSON and we want to export render. And that's it. That's all we got to do. So now that's a nice and neat way to export how we're used to. But like I said, we can't export a class. We have to actually just export the actual functions. All right. So now that we have all this ready to go, we should be able to run our browserify command and actually build our function. Um, so now what browserify does is it just goes through anything that you require and it translates it into a way that you would normally be able to include uh, script tags in just bare bone HTML and in plain old JavaScript. Um, so that's what it allows us to do. So that's the magic behind it. So it won't work with all modules. Um, like for example, you can't use the file system module for node, but you can do things like certain react components, like the react component we're using the react JSON view component. So now we're just, we're going to go to our terminal and we're going to run NPM run build. Um, because if we look back at our package.json, I already created this build script for us. So this build script, I'm just going to go through it really quickly and explain what it does. So it's using browserify and what we're telling browserify is look into index.js and it's going to look into index.js. It's going to see everything that index.js includes. So it's going to see that it needs the react DOM. It's going to see that it needs react and it's going to see that it needs this landing component. And then it's going to go into each of those files and get all those includes. It's going to do that recursively. 
and it's going to output a JS file that has all those methods, all those functions, all that functionality that we need, and it's going to output it to a single file. And that's why we're including this app.js file in our actual index.html here, because that's all we'll need. So now we're going to do npm run build. And it might take a second, but it's going to build all that. And it, we didn't get any errors, so we're successful. So now if we look in our build directory, we now have this app.js file. And I mean, it's huge. It's going to have thousands upon thousands of lines because it went through and it recursively got everything we needed. Um, yeah, I mean, this file is 30,000 plus lines, right? Uh, so you would never want to do this yourself. It does it for you. That's kind of the beauty of Browserify, right? All right, so now we're going to open our index.html in our window. So let's just open it. I'm going to open it with the live server that's built into React. I mean, that's built into Visual Studio Code. And give it just one second. It should pull up. And here we go. So um, it took it a second, but that's just because of how many lines are in that data file. But here we are, we have our React component and you notice, like I will go back to Visual Studio Code, we have no server running. There is no server running. This is just vanilla um, JavaScript and that's what makes it so powerful, right? Um, so yeah, so we can scroll down and we can see all of these entries. Uh, there are, you know, 99 entries, but I'm gonna right click and let's inspect our element because remember we also made it so where we could see some changes so we can actually update this data too um, so let's update some of this data so like for example uh, let's say we wanted to go down to entry number five here and let's say we want to change the name from morgan morganita morganita yeah let's change it from morganita to um paul and let's control enter and we'll confirm that and so I actually had an error here. So, um, so yeah, I, I mean, errors happen. So I actually did this dot state and <laughs> this is wrong. It should be this dot set state, right? So it should be this dot set state is this. So now we're going to run our build command one more time and we're going to reload our live server page on that builds. And this, this automatically got reloaded because we are using that live server. So let's go down to entry number number uh, six again, or entry number five again, and let's change Morganita. Let's try to change that to Paul one more time. And as we can see, we did update the string successfully. Um, and I mean, if we could check, remember I had our state printout, so we can see it all over here again. So here we go, num entry number five, we did change it um, to Paul, but we ch kept the last name. So that's pretty much it. So the cool thing about Browserify is that we can use it to basically use our React components wherever we want. Now, it's not a perfect solution. We can't use it to use um, just every component everywhere, but for most React components, it will work. So I recommend you go out there and you give it a shot. All right, see you next time.